Talking about God at the moment might seem pretty hard for some people. You may be thinking, if there is a God, how can he let something like this happen? Well, somebody once wrote these words. I could never myself believe in God if it were not for the cross. In the real world of pain, how could one worship a God who was immune to it? That lonely, twisted, tortured figure on the cross, that's the God for me. He laid aside his immunity to pain. He entered our world of flesh and blood, tears and death. The cross of Christ is God's only self-justification in such a world as ours. If you were executed on a cross, the cause of death was normally asphyxiation, as the sufferer no longer had the energy to raise their chest to suck air into their lungs. God knows from personal experience what it is to suffer and die from lung failure. But why? Why did Jesus have to die like this on a cross? More and more we live in a society today which really wants nothing to do with God and is increasingly rejecting his ways and his values. A society which has been happy to pay Premier League footballers £300,000 a week and to pay newly qualified NHS nurses £25,000 a year. Of course there are far, far worse examples of ignoring God and rejecting his ways and values and of course we all do it in our own lives all the time. We certainly can't judge others. The Bible calls this tendency sin, and it tells us that God cannot allow it to go on forever. God can't just ignore our rejection of him, any more than the government could ignore the person who rejected its authority and decided to break all its lockdown laws just as it pleased them. We couldn't accept that, how much less a perfectly just God. No justice must be done, or God would not be God. But God is a God of love, even for those who have had very little to do with him in their lives. We've already seen that his ways are not our ways. He would pay the nurses who are risking their lives to serve us far more than Premier League footballers. And God's ways are not our ways when it comes to satisfying his justice either. You see, instead of passing sentence on us, he came into the world in the person of his son, Jesus, and passed sentence on him so that we need not face it. That's why Jesus died on the cross, to deal with the seriousness of our ignoring and rejecting the God who made us. The Bible puts it like this. The son of man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The way in which we value the nurses and doctors who are serving us has led to a response in the applause which rings out around the country every Thursday evening. So truly valuing Jesus, serving us by dying for us calls for a response. The Bible calls this response repentance. It simply means to turn round, turning away from ignoring God, turning back to him and his ways and thanking him for serving us in the death of his son for us on the cross. And you know, the Bible promises us that for anyone who will respond in this way, their sentence is paid their rejection of God is completely forgiven and their place in his family for all eternity is utterly secure the moment they respond. Death is a disease that has been defeated. Jesus' death for us is the vaccine, a vaccine that makes not a virus, but death itself impotent, unable to hurt us. But how do we know this is true and not just wishful thinking 
in the face of the fear caused by this pandemic. We know in the same way that we discover whether any vaccine works. We wait and watch for its results. Testing of a possible vaccine produced by those in Oxford has recently begun. Now they must wait and watch for its results. And so it was with the death of Jesus on the cross as our vaccine against death itself. He died on Good Friday and then there was a wait of three days until the results were seen on the Sunday when he rose again to new life, proving that his death is an effective vaccine against our death. If the Oxford vaccine against COVID-19 works, we'd be foolish not to take it, wouldn't we? Foolish not to start enjoying life again, knowing that we are immune to the virus. Would it not be foolish not to take the vaccine against death? that God is offering to each and every one of us to turn back to him and trust in Jesus' death and rising again for us. And then in absolute confidence, knowing we are now immune to death, to start enjoying to the full that life with him, which will never end. <laughs>